This is all right. I'm good. No, I'll, I'll need. We're just going to finish up now in departmental. Okay, I think so. Okay, uh, we'll call the meeting to order. This time I'll entertain a motion to accept the agenda. There's a motion by Mr. Lawrence. Is there a second? Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Second. second by Mr. Barrett. Any discussion? All in favor? It's a 5 0 vote. Thank you. Brings us to the mayor's report. No report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council reports, Mr. Glavin, Mr. Barrett. I don't have one. Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Gaines. Okay. No reports. Citizens' comments. Is there anybody on the left who would like to speak? Yes, ma'am. Please come up. There you go. Okay, thank you. Hi. State your name for the clerk. Sarah Rusky, the Harrison County Library System. And I just wanted to come back and reiterate um, how we would very respectfully ask you to give grant us the increase that we requested. I wanted to underline the fact that uh, the, most of this request is restoring the cut that was made last year and I just I wanted to reiterate because some some of y'all were were not at the last uh, session because I think that's really key because that there I think there was a misunderstanding about that the thirty four thousand dollars was cut last year we're asking that to be restored and we're asking for the sixteen thousand dollars additional funding and I also wanted to underline that uh, obviously, we feel like this is all key to continuing our services as, uh, as a standard that we're doing, or we wouldn't ask for it because we, we know that you have a lot of responsibilities. But I also wanted to underline the, the importance of the, the $34,000, if it is not restored, would put us in jeopardy with the state funding. We receive about $207,000 in the personnel incentive grant, and we're required to show what they call ma maintenance of effort. And that means that we need at least flat funding from all of our local sources. And if we don't have flat or increased funding, they will cut our state funding. Last year, we are probably OK. It, it, the, 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 We'll have to ask for an exemption next year, but I think you know we'll say COVID and it will be fine. However, if that cut were sustained, there would not be a, a reasonable justification in the eyes of the Library Commission, I don't think, because of the, the good financial standing that the city of Alexi is in currently with record gaming revenues and, and the general prosperity that we're lucky to be having right now. So I just wanted to make that clear about that $30 thousand dollars not being an increase over a, what I'm going to call the normal year like 2018 etc I also just wanted to mention that even if you grant us the entire increase that we're asking for we're still under the funding that we had in 2004 so um, we're operating in 2021 2022 inflationary prices but we're being funded less than we were in 2004 so just to put that in a little perspective and also just to let you know we, we really hope that you will that we will fund this you were discussing the your your city employees salaries and that your median was maybe around 31 and ours is I haven't done the math because I don't have all that information handy, but I'm sure that it's well under 25. So if you were to grant us this increase that we're requesting, we're still well below your your basement, okay? So I, I know that I know that you have to look out for the people you think are your people, but I, I also just want to say that our people are, in a way, they're your people too, and they're still making well below your minimum salary. So I don't think that it is unconscionable for to consider this small increase that we're asking for to get our our folks up still below where your folks are. So. I just wanted to say that. And after our last meeting, we asked some of our patrons to, to give us feedback to share with you about why they really hope that you don't cut the library or not grant our increase because it's really important to them. And I, I don't know how much time I have. I think I'm probably getting over time, but 
I, I, I will share those with you in a written form, but, um, but I, I will be happy to share some of those later if you have questions about why we need libraries and so forth. So it looks like I'm over four, so <laughs> thank you for indulging me. Thank you, Ms. And I'm Ryan. here if you have questions as you discuss okay. the matter. Thanks, thank you. Increases, and we're targeting. We're mainly targeting. We we have. Um, I I believe it's 15. Sharon's here, and she's the numbers. She's more of a numbers lady. But we have a significant portion of our Biloxi staff who make under ten dollars an hour. Let me ask you a question. Plan is between the 31st and the 31st. Go into effect January 1st. I appreciate what y'all do at the library, I do. You know, I've, I've worked to, to bring a new library and, and, and help, faci help facilitate that. But perception is important to me. And I believe that the perception of us giving extra money to give raises to the library employees and not giving them to our employees is a bad perception. And so I would propose not 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 giving it to you, but waiting until we implement those raises and then giving that $16,000 additional money to the library when we do that at the same time that we give our employees a raise. All right, hold, uh, hold that thought, Mr. Barrett, okay. so we can get through citizens' comments. Well, I'm sorry, I, I missed. No, if, if, if you would, uh, let, let's move on to citizens' comments, and when we get into covering some of these things, we'll have you back up. Anybody else on my left, your right? Comments? Anybody on my right, your left? There is nobody good. Citizens' comments are closed. That brings us to the... Step right up. Okay. Oh, I got it. Sorry, I missed back you. Now. <laughs> I got it. All right, I'll try and get my big girl voice on. You'll know I have I'm really back. soft vocal cords. Imagine that you're screaming at the mayor. <sighs> well, Not about um, I think a few things, a few your extra name, things. Your name. I'm sorry, Sharon Davis. I'm head of the Biloxi Libraries. I think a few small points that I'd like to drive home are not all of our people are getting raises. We are only trying to pull up the ones who are making $8.26 an hour or $9.79 an hour. Everyone's not getting raises. We have two professionals who have master's degrees that fall under the exemption status. We want them to be pulled up to where we can fully utilize them. Right now, I am literally the only person who can work 40 hours, over 40 hours a week, the way that our regs are. So if we get people to call in, too many people call in sick, it's a total scramble. I have lost at least eight employees um, leaving for better paying jobs in the last year and a half. We have had a lot of people who have decided to retire um, simply because they know they're not getting the increases and they're not going to get the increases because that's not what we're wanting. That's not what we're trying for. We're simply trying to be able to keep the employees that we have and get them up to where they're, they're making enough to where they actually want to come in and they actually want to stay with us. And when you make an 26 an hour and you've got a master's degree, like one of our local history people, we can't keep we can't keep them around. Um, you know, the person who does the animation that plays three times a week or three times a day on BTV, she makes less than ten dollars an hour. Um, she just had to find a new place to live. She left Biloxi for the first time. She's lived in Biloxi her entire life. She wasn't able to afford housing here and she moved to a different city. Um, those are the people we're targeting. We're not giving a percentage raise. We're not giving everybody a raise. We're not um, 
we're not just trying to make things better for all of our employees. This is something that's very targeted to the people that we know we need to keep and to those positions that we keep losing. I just had a person call me on Friday, children's librarian. She said, tomorrow's my last day. I found a better job at a daycare center. She's making uh, close to $4 more an hour, literally across the street, with far fewer duties and responsibilities. And she had to do it because she had to pay her bills. So um, that's just something I want to drive home, that we're not, we're not all getting raises. And that's not anywhere in the library system. We're not all getting raises. We're not asking for that. We are just asking for the positions that we really need to keep in order for people to come in and see the same people helping them every time that they come in, in order to have people who can make these community connections to help people Thank you, Ms. Davis. They need. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, that ends citizens' comments. We'll move to the policy agenda. We're really, I think today it's a last look at the budget. Uh, there were a couple of loose ends on the non-departmentals, um, such as because last time we, at our last workshop we tried to get a consensus on some some items. Um, the Croc Center, the uh, MLK Celebration, uh, the Center for Nonviolence. Uh, Ms. Newman brought that up, and I brought that up, and then CTA, I think. Uh, we, we, had, we were missing a couple of council members at that time. So um, what I'd like to do is start, start off with the non-departmentals and look and, and just a couple of things. The Croc Center, Mr. Gines, you were requesting. Mr. President, let yes. me say real quickly, you've got a piece of paper that reflects our last conversation and straw poll votes on all the departmentals. This should be reflective of the last on our marathon meeting. Absolutely. So, uh, again, th this is a non-departmental, and this is the total budget, but it's not been up. It's a few uh, thirty, forty thousand dollars difference. Uh, Are you proposing an increase to CASA that we didn't discuss? No, we, this is a reflective of what you did, of what was passed the last. Why is CASA in yellow? So, if you look uh, at that was in uh, well, I'll tell CASA, you. This was he, here. He, look, excuse me just for a minute, and this may save us some time. Yeah. In our last discussion, my notes indicate that uh, we, were, we originally, uh, what was proposed was $10,000 for the MLK celebration. I, I think the question was, was that going to be in Biloxi? Yes, yes. It's going to be in Biloxi, and if it was, uh, we wanted that contribution to be $10,000, but it would be only 5000 if that were event were to be held in Gulfport, um, and and that's subject to change. You know, uh, like before we budgeted ten thousand, and we didn't use the whole amount of money to it. So um, we can budget it. Uh, I, I'm gonna ask to budget all of it, but of course, uh, at that time, we can vote to disperse the money if it's in Biloxi. If it's not in Biloxi, we don't know if it's going to be in Biloxi or Gulfport. Uh, at this to time. my knowledge, it's going to be here in MGM Stadium at our stadium. So, so what I'd suggest is we leave 10,000 in the we, budget. We leave it in there, yes. For that. And uh, we talked about the Croc Center, you brought that up earlier. Uh, the last time, uh, even though we did budget it, we had a grant that came in through a generous donor that uh, offset that, so, but I would still like to leave that in there. Okay, do we know if we're getting um, a grant from Mississippi Power this year? Well, we don't know if we're getting a grant, but uh, it did offset it. We didn't expect it. It just happened. Right. Um, but I just would still like to leave it in there. And because of the close of the Mercy Cross facility, um, we've spent more than that uh, on personnel in there and the power bill and what have you. And I think that that's a, uh, a good offset right there by itself. Okay. Then, uh, so you recommend to put the twenty, leave the twenty thousand in. For just the leave it in the budget. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Are we, we all on the same page with that. Is everybody good with that? We're trying to get a consensus. You, Diane has updated it based okay. on the last conversations we had in, in workshop. That right. as far as we know, I got it. it. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. I'll wait 
let, let, let me go back and try and get us focused again. So we're looking at leaving the MLK celebration contribution at $10,000 right now. Yes. Is everybody good? We comfortable with that as, as a group? Yeah, it's currently in here at five. It's currently, yeah, it's listed as five, but 10. I'm asking 10. Oh, Oh, okay. I got you. So you're actually adding 5,000 to in that. Yellow. Yep. Awesome. I mean, so like last time, we'll put it in we didn't use it. So. Yeah. Down here, right here, Duman Asset. We just add 5, make it 10. Yeah. Okay, see. <laughs> <laughs> she asked for the center for nonviolence as well. You better do that. <laughs> you ain't got to. So what is the consensus of the group for the MLK? Yeah, and we approved the request um, subject to grants and location in Biloxi. Yes. Yep. Yeah. The good we'll, offset. We'll do that. And if it's not in Biloxi, then we're only going to contribute 5000 of that. Okay. So we're good at 10000 The uh, uh, other item was, as I go down this from the last workshop, was uh, $20,000 for the Croc Center. Uh, you'd mentioned that earlier in talking about it. There were four of us here, and it was kind of split as I recall I think but what what do we want to do there what, what is that for I and, mean what are we um, using it for well right now we, we closed the facility the Mercy Cross facility and just through the salary alone yeah. power bill we would exceed that uh, I mean we definitely are way under the salary and the power bill and that's for our kids to have a, a place to go uh, it doesn't mean just war two by itself we're talking about, you know, all over the city's uh, grants. But we were using it for what? Uniforms, uh, No, we were using it for kids. The, the Croc Center is a pay... Yeah, scholarships. That's the word I was looking for. Scholarships, okay. Uh, scholarships all right. for kids to go in and play and have activities. How, how, how much does that cost for a kid? I know there's a monthly fee, or is it monthly? Or yeah, monthly? It's, it's a monthly fee, but what they would do is they would give scholarships per year for the child. And how much? And I, that twenty-five thousand dollars. How many children? I think that? it's up to a hundred kids, if not a little more. Oh, just ninety-five. And, and what? Um, I'm sorry. And what? Um, what is the qualification for that scholarship? Qualifications. It's um, they would have to meet the minimum age. I think the minimum age is eight years old, all the way up to seventeen years old. And of course, they have cons parental consent to go in and out the facility. Do they have to live in a certain area or? They do not have to live in a certain area. And I think we had this conversation okay. what, a year ago and okay. it kids with outside of the ward also. Okay. Um, so uh, basically it's the first, first come, first, first serve. First come, first serve if you qualify. All right. Yeah. I can get behind yes. that. Okay. How are we with that as a, as a group? We're good with this? I am. I, I, think, it's, I think it's a good thing. So the last time we did the same thing, and he actually wanted to get a lot of money, more grant money. Yeah, that's still a possibility. Got a grant last time. still a possibility yeah. too. But Jeff, we all lose at Mercy Cross yeah. as far as that. So I, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, and Mercy Cross is no longer. Yeah. So we kill the power bill and we kill the. Jim Paul. Yeah. Let me say again, I think you and I discussed it. If Mississippi Power was to come with the twenty thousand, we won't be using that twenty thousand for scholarships. Absolutely. We hate right. not. So when we spend it, all we got allocating it. Gotcha. All right, that, that's, that's the conditional aspect good of that. Move. Okay, so we're all good with that. Okay, it sounds like we are. We're just, yeah, I'll vote for it. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think we just need a consensus. We can vote on it uh, at, at the budget meeting on the, what, the 14th, September 14th. Okay, that brings us to the next item. We had removed the $15,000 for the Harrison County Soil Conservation. Um, there, there was uh, 20000 added for Main Street, and there was 20000 added for the Greater Biloxi Economic Foundation. And I think those of us present, I, I think, as I recall, there was consensus with the four of us that were here at that time. It was. Um, and the, the next item was the Seafood <laughs> Museum Management Agreement. Uh, Mr. Lawrence had requested that that be increased from 73.6 to 92. That was an increase of 
$18,400. Uh, I'm comfortable with that. I, I don't know where everybody else is. The four of us that talked about it okay. at the last meeting, I think we're split or weren't all on the same page, but I'm good with that. Is there a consensus here with the group that we're good with this? Hey, explain that breakdown. I know you called me, but just to refresh my memory, what's yep. that breakdown? Mr. Lawrence, if you would. Uh, no, no. Uh, Robin and Kim came before us and asked to bring them back to what it was originally. And that's when you added the 18 full back to it to make it the 92,000. It was a, it was cut 20%. So what we're doing is going back to adding 18 four back to the 70 something makes it 92,000 like it was originally. When was that cut? That was uh, the, we cut that about 10 years ago. And while well, we kept saying we were going to go back to it, we were going to go back to it, we just never did. So they came this year, presented it to us. And I'm just asking y'all to put that back in there. You know, it's a city of Biloxi building, city of Biloxi property, everything about it, city of Biloxi. So it's all us. So just asking you to go back to what was it originally in 92,000. That's what they requested, you know. So. Any discussion on that? Any concerns? Good. I'm good with it. You, okay. I'm good. you good with it? Comfortable with it? Mr. President, it's going to go to 93 from 736. Is that right? It's right. Going, it's going to go to 92 from 736 to 92. Okay. Okay, it sounds like we're on the same page here. The next item was CASA. We had originally budgeted 5,000, or that's what it was this past year. And Ms. Newman had asked that we increase that by 5,000. I don't have a problem with that. Anybody? Aye. Question? Robert? Aye. Well, you'd have to ask Ms. Newman. Oh, it's, she's not here um, <laughs> to ask, but why? It's traditionally been 5,000. Um, you know, this is just another group that, that mimics the Department of Human Services and different national agencies that, that do this. Um, I'm not sure that they provide a function, Margaret, Alfonso, who was the judge of the youth court that really promoted this, is no longer even in the youth court. I don't, I, I just don't know what function they provide or, or why it's a service um, and why we support it or why we fund it. Like it's. I can't recall exa exactly it was related to, I think, ju juveniles that were being adjudicated and I, I, I don't think mentor is the right word. No, it, it's not. It's a, it's a voluntary program that, that we, yeah. we use, but we have the Department of Human Services. We have the Child Protective Services. We have so many entities that do this already. I, I just don't understand. We continue to fund people that come in here and ask us to give us money and tell us it's for the kids, but it's, we're just doubling theirs on a whim. I, 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 she's not here to advocate for it and to give me her position. I just don't know why we're doubling it on a I suggest that we leave it in here and then when we have our big look at it, maybe bring it up then when we have the full council to, to chime in. Well, I would suggest that we return it to 5,000 the way the whole council assumed it was other than Dixie requesting it to be increased. If just one of us asked us to increase it all, well, then let's just go through here and put the numbers that I want to put on everything. Uh, I, that's my point is why increase it? Because one council member suggests something. Um, so what's the will of the council? Uh, you just give me five or ten. Give me a. Yeah. We can do the same thing. Or the other, if we increase it or leave it the same, obviously it was increased by some request, and somebody made a decision to increase it. Uh, you know, I, I would. The four. It the doesn't four, matter to me. But. Sure. The four of us that were present last time when Miss Newman made that request had no problem with it. But the. But I was the, here that time. But, That's but, absolutely but not just, true. Please, just a minute. But the reason we're discussing it now is because three of you weren't here. There you go. So, you know, Mr. Deming's point is leave it at five. And Mr. Barrett said, and I think Mr. Glavin, your, your response was, well, we can always we can come back to it. But really what we're trying to do is firm up these numbers so the administration can get done what they have to get done. Can I correct something? The four of us that were here, I was here was one of those, and I was not okay with increasing costs. It wasn't mentioned. She mentioned the Women's Center for Nonviolence. She now mentioned you, that as well. Now you're suggesting she mentioned that as well, and that's fine. 
I must have overlooked that. I vote against CASA every time because it's a waste of funding, because it's duplicate services for mm -hmm. that multiple organizations already do. Um, so, so you're a no. Absolutely so, okay. a no. Like increasing uh, how funding. Does, so how does the rest of the council feel about the CASA? Leave it at five, leave it at 10. To me, it doesn't matter because it can be amended on the 14th whenever Ms. Newman tells us why she asked for an increase. So for me, one way or the other, um, it can be amended. If we move it back to five, we can amend it to 10, or if it stays at 10, we can amend it. Does it to make five. a difference with anybody at this point, whether it's five or 10? If not, we'll put it it's back at five. Me. Let's go ahead and leave it, and then we'll, we can amend it later. Leave it at 10? Yeah. Okay. Is everybody good with that? Leave it at 10? If you want to amend it, you still, okay. All right, so we'll leave it at 10. Uh, the next change was the Gulf Coast Center for Nonviolence. Um, the request was for 25000 That was from Ms. Newman, and, and I agreed with that. And uh, later, in, in checking, the Gulf Coast Center for Nonviolence is also getting, is, is already earmarked for $10,000 from Community Development Block Grant. So I reduced that amount from twenty-five to fifteen. Okay. And um, Diane, I got a letter to you about that. Okay, just so you can see that. Uh, so anyway, that was a change. I wanted you to see that we'd reduce that that ask that particular ask from twenty five thousand to fifteen thousand. The uh, Gulf Coast Center for Nonviolence. That's a family justice court. That that may or may not get off the ground. Those funds may or may not be expended. It's a it's a countywide effort. Uh, that was an earmark for five thousand dollars. The uh, only other let's see, the next thing was the Coast Transit Authority. We had some discussion and we're split with the with the council members that were present whether or not to in increase it. This this current year it was two hundred twenty thousand dollars, but they also had CTA had uh, received a grant I think of seventy thousand or could have been a little more than that. And uh, the ask this year was for 294000 which would have been, I suspect, close to or what it would have cost without the grant. Um, but anyway, we're sort of split on that. I see Mr. Braden here if, if, representing CTA. If, if you had any questions, you're welcome to come up if you'd like. I know it's a bit unusual for the board member of an organization like CTA to be here to represent the organization, but unfortunately, uh, Kevin Coggin had intended to be here today, and he tested positive this morning for COVID, so he's going to be uh, away from the office for a couple of weeks. So I, I'm here to to represent uh, uh, CTA and ask any any or answer any questions that uh, I'm capable of answering. Uh, question: uh, He tested. Positive for COVID? Yes, sir. Maybe this morning. <laughs> I, have, I haven't been around Kevin in over two weeks. So. We get way back in. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I guess my, my question, go ahead, like go. I did last week, I asked a question. Like I tell you, I'm, that's my job to do that. Y'all added 74000 to the 220 to go back to 294 Y'all justified, according to what your book and everything said, I think a couple questions going back to raises and everything for our citizens. I mean, our employees. Do y'all give us a full audit from the CTA, an outside audit to the city of Bluxy to see that y'all. I know there's an annual audit, but whether it is actually forwarded to the city, I couldn't. Uh, I don't really know, but I can take that uh, uh, question away and provide you an answer by email if you'd like. Right, we, well, what I do I'd like to have something set back to the council yeah. to say the accountability of you, the, your employees, what y'all pay them compared to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We needed to do 274 to make the CTA work, then we really don't have a whole lot of choice with that. Yeah. But I do think that, like I told you before, somebody asked for 75000 I'm going to ask questions. you got to prove to me that it's feasible for us to be able to do that. Yeah. But I also need to be you got to be held accountable, not you, CTA. So we do need an order from y'all, an outside order, like we received from everybody else. Yeah, well, I, I will work with uh, 
Kevin while he's at home to uh, get you those answers and email it to the council. Um, and I don't want to sound like like another uh, repeating uh, uh, person like the previous speakers, but again, this is a partial restoration of what the prior budget was pre-COVID. Uh, so historically, the city has uh, subsidized CTA for the last 10 years between 300 and 350,000 a year. Okay, we, I got Mr. Glavin. I, I, I do have some questions. At our last meeting, when uh, you put this request in there, I believe there was a question, if uh, this wasn't enough and you found your expenses were uh, gonna go over this, you said y'all would find uh, a way to make up that difference. Well, if it's small, but okay. uh, obviously right. there's a limited uh, capability. Okay. It's right. not like a slush fund over I hear you, I hear you. So uh, my next question is this, uh, y'all do serve the hospitality industry, not only uh, for employees that work in the hospitality industry, but also people that go into our fabulous casinos, right? Do you know, yes. those, do you know those numbers? How many tourists that, that ride on CTA? Um, it, I believe it was a breakdown in the presentation that we made. I don't have them memorized. But what do you think it clearly, is? Just, just a good guess. What do you think that is? Uh, somewhere around uh, 30, 40,000 riders. A year? Uh, let's see. It's a big number. Okay, and it's a big number. And it, it's a, if you it, give me a second, I can look it up. But uh, No, you don't have to look it up. But my point is this. So all these many riders that go into the casinos and spend uh, whatever's left in their pockets, um, do the casinos subsidize CTA? They do not. Why not? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, I have been told the, for the last eight months that I've been on the board that uh, previous attempts to do so was uh, went nowhere. Uh, in fact, I've been pushing the organization uh, to uh, meet with each casino manager to investigate what we could do in the way of additional services that are targeted at the casinos and have them provide some subsidy for that because it would be win-win for the city and for CTA. And I don't disagree with that, but don't you think that they have a vested interest in, I mean, Obviously, there's a value in CTA servicing the casinos, and if it went away, would they view that as a positive or a negative or neutral? Oh, I'm sure it would be viewed as an extreme pos a negative. I mean, uh, as I presented uh, last two weeks ago, 31% of our total ridership uh, are using CTA to uh, as transportation to and from work. Uh, we have never surveyed the next level down yet, although I have requested uh, the organization to, uh, to add it to the survey, is how many of that 31% work in the hospitality industry, the casinos in particular, or other types of jobs, uh, so that we have the data to back that up and can use that hopefully as ammunition uh, with the casinos. But this stuff isn't gonna bear fruit in time for this year's budget. Well, I, I, and, I don't and, disagree, but if we don't talk about it, then you're absolutely we just right. delay, we and, and you have my way. commitment as, as a board member, I'm driving that organization as hard as I can to peel back the onion and find these opportunities and, and, uh, and get them to uh, pursue them in a, in a, a right. Well, sir, I'm gonna ask you to work harder. I, I know you, you, you love your job, obviously. You've been here and you're a numbers guy. You, you mentioned that last time and, Maybe we can convince some folks that there is a tremendous value, not only for tourists, but for the workforce, that uh, maybe they need to help subsidize. I'm them. convinced that there is, because there's no service today for the night shift employees at those casinos. And yet, most of those employees are dishwashers or housekeeping people that are in that bracket that are most likely to use public transportation. Okay. All right. Thank you. All uh, right, it's on this figure, 294,000. Where's the council on this? We comfortable with that? Um, I, I have a couple of questions. Mr. Barrett. So I, I, got, an, I got an email, I, I don't remember who it was from, saying that if we didn't give this number, that, you would, that services would be cut 25% on the beachcomber route. Is that correct? That's correct, and that letter was from me. Okay, and um, with a 
decrease? What Explain to me what that would mean. Well, we would have to take roughly one half of the beachcomber uh, uh, route and turn it around at Edgewater, go back to Gulfport. So you would lose roughly half of the service on beachcomber. So the email said 25%. 25% of your total uh, hours in, of service, which if so, it all comes from beachcomber would take roughly 50% of beachcomber. I mean, obviously they haven't made a final determination as to whether we, we would, it would be uh, more optimal to reduce uh, some of the routes on Pass Road, but recognize we've only got three routes that serve Biloxi directly. And that's the Beachcomber, which is Gulfport to Biloxi's terminal, Casino Hopper, which is Biloxi only, and then the, uh, the Pass Road route, which is Gulfport to Biloxi. Okay. So, you know, it could come from any of those. We think the least detrimental would be if we had to cut services, the most likely place to cut it from would be the Beachcomber. So Beachcomber runs from the Gulfport Terminal? To Biloxi Terminal. To, to Biloxi, do, but it, does it hit all the casinos? Uh, it doesn't stop at every casino, but it stops Okay, multiple. and then, but so how many of those do we have currently? You know, I don't know the total number of, uh, of uh, complete routes uh, per day that is, but- No, no, uh, I'm talking how many buses are trolleys or whatever they are run that route so those are buses the trolleys are only used for the casino hopper okay so how many of those not how many times but how many individual buses make that route i don't know the answer to that okay all right that's the only question i have anything else they have a question you brought that up follow up with uh, nathan we're talking about you only have one route actually in Biloxi? There's only one route that is 100% dedicated to Biloxi. Biloxi. We have, like I said, the Beachcomber, which is Gulfport to Biloxi. The split of ridership is about 60% of that Beachcomber route is uh, people that get on or off in Biloxi, and 40% are people that get on or off in Gulfport. Then we have the Pass Road route, <clears throat> parallels the beachcomber and then the only then we have a route that goes from the main terminal downtown to diabraville and then we have uh the casino hopper wow. and i i i know that i don't have the presentation in front of me unfortunately but we broke down all of that so you could see how that all uh comprised a Biloxi ridership out of the totals. Well, I got a couple of questions I have. It's like, does Gulfport give the same amount of money we do? More. They give more than we and do? And they never complain. Yeah. <laughs> they give more than 294000 I mean, we haven't even had to make a presentation, or they haven't had to make a presentation to the city of Gulfport because they always approve the, the ask. And the Diablo, what did they put up? They put up a small amount. I, as I memory serves me correctly, theirs is only like twenty-five thousand, but they, they've only got that that one route with one stop. You know what I mean? You're taking people pretty much from Blessed going to the Alville, more than they coming here probably. Does it work that way? So they I mean, they're actually gaining. You send more people from Biloxi to the Alville than the Alville send them to Biloxi. Cause they're all going to promenade and stuff like that. I know they. Yeah, and so. and we have a proration formula that we use for determining how you know how we would allocate the the fare box revenue between Biloxi and and Diabraville. Uh, I don't know the exact specifics of how that algorithm works, but it. Uh, I, I mean, everything else I've reviewed has indicated that the algorithms are reasonable to prorate. Uh, both the revenue and the operating expense between the various cities that where a given route uh, serves more than one municipality. Thank you. All right, so where are we on the contribution of 294000 I don't have a problem with that. 
I mean, basically what I heard is if, if there's no increase, well, routes are disappearing or parts of Yeah, and we aren't going to do that arbitrarily. Obviously, we'll work with whoever uh, uh, the mayor or the council wants us to work with to decide if, if, you, if the budget isn't the full ask amount, how we go about and where we go about re reducing uh, coverage. Okay, Mr. Barrett. Um, I have one more question for you and then a question for the mayor. The route that goes from Biloxi to D'Iberville and then it basically runs from Biloxi to D'Iberville and back and forth, right. right? What do we pay? Do you know what percentage of that route we pay for and what percentage D'Iberville pays for? Um, I, as I recall, you're paying 20% uh, of it and D'Iberville's paying 80% of it. Okay. So that's because our people's going yeah. over there. And then, Mr. Mayor, um, I'm not down here every day and to realize, you know, how many people's use that. What's the recommendation of the administration on this request? Well, because I'm torn just, you know, one of the things, there's still routes coming from Gulfport to bring these people. So if they have to, and, and you know, that's why I ask how, how many of those buses are in circulation. If we lose 25%, does that mean that somebody that has to be at work at, at nine o'clock, would they have to get on the bus 30 minutes earlier, that, two that's hours earlier? Obviously with, you know, that, that's, um, that's know, one of our busier that. routes, you know, as far as service hours are concerned. And yet, uh, you know, at least it is running frequently. I don't know. It's like every 30 minutes or 45 minutes, something like that. So people that ha would have to get to work that use this, the dishwashers and such, would still have that available to them. They may just have to leave for work 30 minutes earlier. Yeah, and we would have to take a look at time of day and look at okay. which are the the lowest ridership to determine, you know, okay, well, this, this particular route at 815, uh, okay. It is a candidate to be eliminated because it's one of the lowest uh, ridership times of the day, or and that analysis hasn't yet been done. Good. Okay. And you know, we're comfortable with what we propose here, with inclusive of the 75 hit or 74 something, 294, I think, is what was talked about last time. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Correct. Okay. So my my opinion is, whatever the will of the council is, this affects your wards more well it doesn't affect mine at all but this affects your wards more than it does mine so whatever the will of the rest of the council is the majority that's what i'll go with well it does affect your ward it's tax dollars yes so they're, they're right so as far as as far they're as subsidizing. my point is the usage of it yeah. and the people that people in my ward don't have this available to them is, is was my point um and and so you know if y'all feel that it's needed I'll, I'll support it, um, what, whatever the will of the council is on this. Mr. Gat, Mr. Glavin, you look like you're pregnant with a question. <laughs> Not with a question. I'm just, I'm just so perplexed with, with CTA's re request for these increases, and uh, we're still not out of the COVID uh, issues. Um, you heard uh, their expert say that he doesn't even know why the casinos won't chip in a little bit. Um, you know, I, I just, uh, th this gives me every year some angst that, you know, we, we, we have a significant amount, $673,000 was uh, last year's budget. Now we're increasing it another 50. It doesn't sound like that much, but library. I'm sorry, library. I got the wrong one. This it's same, it's almost the same damn thing though, but, um, <laughs> Anyway, it's a it's it's a lot of money that that we're looking at, and uh, I, it it always gives me pause. It always gives me pause when um, we have an industry that's benefiting greatly from it, and uh, everybody says that's okay, you know. So um, I, I got a lot of people that question me about it each and every budget year. You know why why do we keep keep doing this? And uh, it's no different this year, you know. So it's hard. I mean, it's it's going to be the will of the council, but you know that that's that's what it is. I I, I, I have a hard time supporting it. That's I guess that's what you read into my right, any, verbal language. Any other comments? I'm I'm good with the number. Mr. Barrett will go along with whatever the council. 
decides Mr. Glavin has some heartburn, Mr. Deming? I mean, it's irrelevant. We can just amend it on the 14th, right? Well, you know, we've been through, this is like the third or fourth meeting to deal with these kind of things, and we just keep kicking it down. What I'd like to do is nail these down and get them done so folks can go ahead and plan, and we can amend every, anything after the public hearing. But, but I know not everybody's happy about being here after a three-hour council meeting dealing with this, but this is the third time we've been going around and around on this. Mr. Hey, let me tell you the score right now. I'm looking at the bottom line, just three pieces of paper in front of you. All right, if we do the 294 and the numbers fall out, uh, with the ads that uh, have been talked about, the, to 92 with the, uh, the, that and uh, uh, another, something or another. But anyway, bottom line is on this piece of paper. Uh, we're close to our revenues. The revenues for the forecast is $70,604,924. The expenses, inclusive of that, will probably be very close to a little bit under that, based on what we're trying to finalize today. So that's the 25,000-foot situation. So we're very close, based on the numbers that are before you. So it's doable. You're comfortable with the numbers, is what it sounds like. Right. And just one last comment from my part, if I may. If we go back to the fiscal year 2019, which was the, the last full year without COVID, the city's budget was 343,000. But that was inclusive of about 65,000 for the special routes too. Yeah. So. And last year we got a, a, a over 100,000, so uh, roughly 120,000 in COVID relief funds, which is the only way that we got to 220 last year to begin with, without cutting service. And this year, we're still getting roughly 70,000 in COVID relief grants, which is again why we aren't back up in that 350 range. The 350 number that you're referring to, mm -hmm. which you weren't on the board at that time, is whenever we had additional routes like the Pops Ferry route that went to D'Iberville and things like that. And so that's why that number. Yeah, that was Pops Ferry route week. only ran for six months, is right. my understanding. We had, you know, we had two, it ran for a year. Mm -hmm. We it, originally, it only went to. Gay Road, which was the city limits line, then for six months it was added and went into D'Iberville. So it ran for a year and the ridership was down, but that's where that 343, that was a top number because that was added in. Others too. We had others and too. there was a couple of other routes that had been minimized as well with that, that were in that number. Well, you have my commitment as your, your representative on that board uh, that I will drive that organization, Kenny, to explore every possible opportunity, including uh, the casinos. And uh, at, least, at the very least, I will be able to come back to you and say, yes, we've managed to do it, or no, we haven't, and here's why, uh, since that question seems to never get answered for you. Sure. All right, Mr. Lawrence, where are you on this figure? Are you good with it? Uh, I'm good with it, uh, I'm, but I like what you said and Kenny said. I think there's something you can explore where you can create more money from the casinos. I think that's out there. And normally we give you every year is 280, give or take a little bit. So you're not that far out with the 290 something. You know, like they said, it was one time thing, that was 65,000. We ran that route, then we pulled it up. So you run about 280,000 roughly yeah. per year. So I'm good with the 294. All right, so it looks like the, the consensus is we're good with 294. Okay. Let's see. Thank you much. And obviously, once we get to figure out what's going to be in the current uh, bill that's in the middle of being uh, passed in Congress, uh, the $1.2 trillion uh, infrastructure bill, we know there's going to be significant funds in there for public transportation, but we don't yet know what that includes and what of it we may be eligible for. Uh, but we will be digging into that very hard uh, during the course of this year. And if we get a... a a, a positive surprise out of that, then I think it's worth having a discussion to cut the budget. All right, the only other, thank the you. Only, the only other item that I'm tracking here is the Harrison County Library. The ask was for 723. Are we good with that number? I believe we were the last time when there were four of us. I think what uh, Nathan was saying, yeah, I kind of agree with him. I think you should give them the 34000 which actually was part of their budget before. 
I think the 16,000 will be taken out of there until we adjust the salaries and employees. The 34,000, like they said, that was what they went going back to. That'd be 707,000. The 16,000 pay raises, that's something I can't, I just can't put that in there until we do something for the employees, city of Bluxton. So the 34 is actually what was in their budget before. So it'd be 707. I can repeat that, but Nathan, since he come back in. <laughs> yeah, Nathan, it basically, that's, a, that's well, it's officially on the record now, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, uh, we're talking about the library, the contribution, and Mr. Lawrence uh, suggested 34,000, not 50,000, 34,000, that would bring the total to 707,000, not 723,000. I think, if I recall correctly, you said maybe a little later in the year. Yeah, and I'm, what I'm not opposed is. to giving that 16,000, but I think perception is important. And I think that we do that and bring those people up to the, the levels they want to bring them to when we do that to our employees. Even though it's 16,000 in the grand scheme of things is not a big number, but perception is important. And we want to give the perception we don't want to give the perception to our employees, hey, we're going to give these guys money for a raise, but we're not going to give you one. That's just my opinion, um, and that, that's my stance on it. So I will second the motion or make the motion, whichever one I no need. No motion's to. necessary. We're just okay. getting a concession. But basically, if it, so to be sure we all heard the same thing, because we're talking about a compensation schedule, working on that, having it in place in January with the mayor. And at that point, if our folks get salary increases then you would be good with adding an additional 16,000 to the library at that Absolutely. time in January. Okay, we're putting I have a question too. When you Go ahead Kenny. I'll get I, to I you. I do now. have a question if uh, one or both of you ladies can come up here if, and we appreciate y'all are here today. I know y'all care about the library dearly but uh, on other sources so the city of Gulfport uh, what are you asking them to increase their budget to? Just, just curious. Just a sec. Um, let me grab my. And and my second part of that would be the county. What what are y'all asking the county for as well? We're asking Gulfport to increase to, from 404 to 416. That's a little bit less, just because those we don't have as many employees who need a, need a raise. And we've also, you know, in, in Galaxy and in all our our cities, we've had some places we've had retirements or we've had other things that we yeah. can do to mitigate. Um, the county, we, well, we're still talking to the county because they seemed open to, to assisting, but they're concerned about the sustainability and whether we will push that out to y'all next year to keep it going. And so that's obviously tricky because we're having trouble getting the 16, the base level. So no, no specified amount that you've requested the county? Yeah, oh yes, we, we asked for an increase for 11 from the county. And the 11,000? Yes, so the county already funds, uh, you know, supplements all of the cities because it costs about $200,000 more than what y'all give us to, to actually provide the services. So the county is already paying for each city and headquarters because headquarters is, you know, not, attached to any particular city. So, so there, um, and also just to remind everyone about the, some of the history of the funding, some of the other entities have also chipped in for the, you know, we had this large computer project, infrastructure project. The county gave us a significant amount for servers and also to help with federal, to match federal money. Um, Gulfport also gave us, um, I, I'm gonna ballpark at like 38,000 or so, probably more, to replace all the Gulfport computers. And so are there any grants that y'all didn't anticipate that y'all are y'all getting any kind of grants from oh, yes. relief or anything like that? Well we 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 get we're getting I mentioned at the last hearing, we're getting a quarter million dollars for an outreach vehicle, but um, it is very, very, very rare for there ever to be sustainable grants for personnel expenses. There are there are grants from time that's a that's a one time grant that's not gonna happen again. Yeah. We're getting some ARPA money that we are putting towards a court like a basic van that we use routinely to, to you know we have books go from each from past Christian to Biloxi and back around again 
Um, so that, that's the ARPA money that, that the cities will also see. But that is, again, one-time money. It will not come back next year. So we can't, there is no grant money available, to my knowledge, and anyone that I know of in library administration that funds sustainable personnel expenses. Okay. Thank you. That's the question. Yes. Go ahead. A couple questions. You have the 707000 Other than that, do you, do you know how much money the city of Biloxi spends on the air conditioning, the maintenance? We spend another six, seven hundred. Nobody ever talks about the extra money we actually spend on these buildings to keep them operating. So I mean, the seven hundred seven thousand is part of your your budget. Mm -hmm. But the city of Biloxi puts up another six, seven hundred thousand dollars easy in light bills, maintenance, we, everything we, else. We pay a. We, it's kind of complicated. We pay some of the light bills and some of the water bills, and I think Sharon has the breakdown, but it depends on some of the buildings are connected. You, you own all the buildings. We don't own any of the buildings because by state law, we can't own property. We can own the books and, you know, we employ the people. But uh, so some of, some of the buildings, like Will Market is attached to a city building and Pops Ferry is attached to the fire station, you know, so we, those, some of those you pay, but like say West Biloxi, we, that's an independent building, so we pay the electricity and things out of the money that you give us. Um, and do you also buy the city with an audit, an outside audit? I'm not sure that we do, but we'd be happy to, to do that. We get like an, an outside audit every year. We have to supply it to the state. Um, every year, and I believe the county as well, but... Um, Everybody, you know, you have to be accountable. And that's our job up here, to ask these questions, to make sure things are right. When you spend this money, you, anybody else, it doesn't matter. And that's why we ask the question. Nobody's against the library or anything else. You're just trying to verify we spend in taxpayers' money. Of course. And so we got to make sure we spend it the right way. We have no problem furnishing an audit. Um, we had no findings. Okay, any other any other thoughts on this, Mr. Right. Gines? I don't know if you caught all that, but basically the ask was for 723,000, which is an increase of 50,000. Mr. Lawrence was comfortable with 34,000. Uh, Mr. Barrett said if a city employees get raises in January, then maybe we give the uh, then we would give the library another 16,000. To help with them with their raises, that's yeah. kind of where we are. And and um, I'm kind of in line with go ahead and giving them uh, that amount because um, I know Mr. Baird is talking about the raises, but I understand some of the over and beyond things that they do in the summer and the summer programs. A lot of times they are not uh, compensated for some of the uh, summer programs and reading programs that they provide. And this year they it would probably um, uh, to try to get them back on track uh, that we need to look at, uh, as they would say, fully funding uh, the library system and basically the things that I've seen um, them do and uh, going above and beyond the call of duty, um, I'm in favor of giving them um, so you're comfortable with the se You're comfortable with the seven, 723 yes. as yes. I am. Uh, Mr. Lawrence is uh, at 707 and Mr. Barrett would add another 16,000 later. Mr. Glavin, any thoughts, sir? I think it's reasonable to go with an increase uh, as Mr. Lawrence has uh, proposed, and then if we are in a position, you know, we can uh, supplement the uh, rest of it. So that's that's kind of where may, I'm May I say, I'm oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say one word. Mr. President. Uh, okay. I'll let him speak first. 34 and 16 later, or 50 <laughs> right now. 16, 723, 707. Electronics guy. Okay. Um, One more thing, if, if yes, um, I feel like uh, it's $16,000, and like someone said, it isn't really a lot in the grand scheme of things. It's so far below what we got pre-Katrina, and we haven't had a good history of coming back and asking later. We've done that a few times with the computers, and we still... Do you remember where we're, how many computers do we have that we still need to replace? About 16 or about 16 uh, computers that we still haven't replaced from back in 2018. So I have a little bit of worry if, with y'all telling me that if we come back, we might get it. Our fiscal year starts in October just like yours is. So if, if I'm having to go, 
we usually have a staff training in October and we kind of communicate budget and things like that. If I'm having to go to them in October to say, well, um, Gulfport's going to get a raise, Diabriel's going to get a raise, Past Christian's going to get a raise, but Biloxi, you might get one in January. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do that morale-wise. So the only way I can accomplish a raise now, which I feel like I really need to do, and again, it's a tiny raise. I, I understand perception, Mr. Barrett. I think that is, I mean, I understand where you're coming from with that, that you don't want your people to feel, you know, less than, but but I'm thinking of the perception from my people, they're definitely going to feel less than when they know that your people are already making two, three, four dollars an hour more than they are now. And they're maybe going to get more in, when y'all do your raise, but we can't get one for people making 826, 979. The only way I can fix that, and I, I will have to fix it because I I feel like the other the other funders are going to allow us to do this small raise. We'll have to reduce services. We don't have a choice. I can't keep asking my people to deal with the kinds of, you know, you've seen on TV people acting out in public places. Library is a public place, and I'm asking people who make 826, 979 to deal with, with angry people, people who are mad because COVID, they're, they're mentally ill, whatever it is. Yes, ma'am. Let, let, let's, let's do this. Mr. Mayor, you said earlier the, num the numbers are doable, manageable. We've still got some difference of opinion. Let's just leave it where it is right now. We will have to reduce and, services, though, if and, we can't. If we don't get the 16, right. I can't, and we'll I be can't do it. We'll be voting on it, as noted earlier, in a couple of weeks. So right now, let's just leave it at 723 okay. right now. Go ahead, Thank Mr. you for Jim. your time. Well, I, so, I just want to make a comment, though, that this isn't set in stone this is just a discussion yes. for budget purposes today so we're right out correct can i get a word out now sure mr Daly. Right, thank you um so i think we talked last time about a couple things and i know he refers to me as the technology guy but i, I not just the technology guy i i did soak in what you said and i spoke not just to our council but other council and i spoke to different companies um and different sub-governmental entities and Many of them agree that there are grants that can be written from different groups like the Wind Job Center, places like that for groups that provide services in lieu of their services. Um, furthermore, school districts can donate money. Mm -hmm. So that is a, 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 a possibility. There are other funding mechanisms that are out there. Something that someone brought up to me was fundraisers. I'm not sure that I've ever seen a, a Biloxi Library fundraiser. We did the, one. The way that I've seen fish fries for fire departments or museums and things like that. We have great facilities, especially like with the Civic Center down here on, on Howard. So, so tell me about it. I don't know that if, and I've never seen it. Right. Maybe we, we need to do a better job advertising a, it. Well, we had, we invited you all via email. Um, we had a fundraiser in 2018 and Mr. Gines came um, and it was at the, at the courtyard at the Civic Center and um, we raised about Four thousand dollars, which is nice. It helped us. It helped us with some of the computers, um, but it's not. You know, we didn't do it last year because of COVID. You know, we had plans to do it in April, and you know, this April was a wash. Uh, so we, you know, we we definitely that's something on our radar, and we're we've been working in the last several months on founding, creating a foundation with our different friends groups so that, because we can't actually do a fund, the friends had to do the fundraiser. We are not allowed to, to sell things. So the friends can sell tickets to a thing. So, so I, I kind of alighted those together, but it, it's really the friends who, who did it. But we we're working on how, creating a foundation that could do things like that for us. But we can't base personnel costs on fundraisers because that's not necessarily sustainable you know and we're we're a publicly funded public library so again as i mentioned earlier when we have when we're trying to get state funding and other funding if if we you know if we're having to go to to fundraisers to pay our staff you know that doesn't that doesn't work very well as very far as good dancer aren't you Sorry? But you're a very good dancer, aren't you? I am, and, and literally, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I just wanted to point a couple of things out that I did look into some of those things, and there are some funding mechanisms that are available that can help subsidize 
um, some of your needs right. and, and some of the, the will of this council to not have to expel uh, all of our resources. It looks like the mayor is I, gearing up to say something. Volunteer because there is a specific museums and library grants yeah, in, in that we would help you chase if, it's, if it comes it's, to us directly. It's again, a lot of, okay. right, a lot of federal agencies do have personnel mm -hmm. grants or funding for personnel, but the, that those grants there are from IMLS, that's how we get, we're getting the outreach vehicle. They do not have personnel grants. I know WIN does, I know other federal entities, they do provide a lot of funding for personnel, but ours are not. Ours are for programming, for maybe for servers, for, uh, you know, one-time things. They, they don't exist. I did think about your, your suggestion about the, the visits, but it would require, you know, say we charged $100 a visit, you know, just the logistics of how many visits we'd have to have to make enough money to, to fill that gap is just, we, and like we said, we already have some problems keeping staff. We have one children's librarian per location. So I don't know how, like it just logistically would be, I don't see how it would, would work, but. Um, I mean, it sounds like a, a chicken and egg argument, right? We don't have the personnel of, to provide the visits, but we don't have the money with the visits to provide the personnel. So. Right. I mean, I don't know the quantity. That's your job. You're the you're the director. Right. Um, but I was trying to offer so if we find some money. Right. Please pass it along. But, but but also just more problematic for me is that the part of the reason that we have public libraries is that you know 100 years ago or however long it was ago, the the reason they were founded is so that people wouldn't have to have money to use the services. It's publicly funded. So charging schools to come just is philosophically a problem as well. The schools are publicly funded too. They are. And they, they have libraries in the school. So I, I think that that would be another barrier is that they would, if we started charging, they would say, why are we going to go there? We'll just do something in our library. Again, this takes me back to my original argument. And I get it was, it was created 100 years ago and things haven't been the same since Katrina, but nothing has. Times have changed. Times are very different now. Yes. And the schools have their own libraries, so that demographic has access to books. The, the, the next group of, of your demographics are using technology, and so the people that are really using the library are people that, it's, it's not what it was when I was a kid or when you were a kid. It's not really, there, there are some. Don't, don't get me wrong, there are some, I get that. But the overwhelming majority of people that visit the library, I guarantee you if I did a, an actual, actuarial chart, it's decreased significantly every year after year, except for those services that, the, that, that can be provided at the library through technology, looking for jobs and, and things like that. Sharon wanted to respond to I, that. I, I thought of a, a fairly simple way to, to, to say this to you. The format of information is changing. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. The format of information is changing, but the need to access it, especially for those without monetary resources, is not. There is still a gap. And we are in a period, professionally, where we are having to transition from those traditional sources, like you know, the Reader's Guide to Periodical Literature. If you went to, if you went to college and they had all those giant green books that took you forever to dig through. We are in a process of trans, um, transforming from those old ways into providing the kind of access that people need to the digital resources. If we don't have the funding to do that, you're making us irrelevant. It's not the people not needing us. It's not the access not being needed. All you have to look at is the misinformation. All you have to look at, Mr. Barrett didn't know, that we might could have helped him you know, do some completely um, non-biased research on uh, the insurance company. You know, that's what we're trained to do, things like that. So, so the but it's the fact that we're not, the library's we are in the middle, we are in the middle of transitioning from a completely paper-based, which we no longer are. We're never going to be, I don't believe, completely digital. But our role is to provide the access to that information. And 
just because people aren't, you know, sitting around staring at books in the dead quiet of the night at 3 a.m., you know, like you think of in, in high school or like we're portrayed in media, doesn't mean that the access to the information isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. so, have, you ever, have you ever done a Google search and gotten the paywall for an article you're looking for? I've done numerous Google searches and found free versions of almost anything I've looked for everywhere, even New York Times articles that are that are costly i can reroute and find if you're it savvy else. enough and you have someone who's taught you how to do it what about the general lay person Could, what about the dishwashers and the cooks uh, don't tell me dishwashers and cooks are too stupid to figure google out that's absolutely. no i'm not i'm oh, saying that okay. they need to be taught they need to have a place they can let's, go let's get redirected simply because we're far afield i got it's, gaveled it's been a long it's been gaveled. a long day i'm in a gavel kind of mood today all right it's been a long day. Y'all could continue that discussion over coffee if you like. Uh, I don't know that there's anything else we need to do today. I mean, wait a minute. Lawrence. What are we doing? Are we doing a 707? 23. What we said was we're leaving it at 723. If anybody wants to no, kick. We, we didn't say that. You said that. I said that. <laughs> right. Okay. I'll listen to you, Mr. Lawrence. What do you think we should do? I'm, I'm like uh, Kenny. And Robert, the sixteen thousand. We said we'll come back and deal with y'all with the sixteen thousand. We'll do that. But we'll but have to cut now, services but in the meantime. Just, you know, you, you're up here asking for money. Our job is to distribute the money the correct way and the way we feel best. You can come and ask for a million dollars. That don't mean you're gonna get it. You know, I'm just saying. So my thing is, we said seven oh seven. Vote on that. If it, whatever you gotta do. That's what we said. Us three said that. Is that where you are, Nathan? Is that where you are, Kenny? That's where Kenny is. Okay. All right. I, I'm with you. All right. Well, we'll bow to the will of the council comprised of three folks at this time, which is fine. So we'll look at, what was the figure again, George? Seven. No, seven. Oh, seven. Seven, oh, seven. Seven, oh, seven. With an additional, was it 16? 16. An additional 16 in January if if city employees get raises. You might be able to do it before then if, if we roll out some. Whenever. I'm, j I'm just getting this clarified. Don't complicate it. Thank you. All right, 707 is a number. I like the plane. 707 is a number. All right. <laughs> 707. Okay, there we are. Any, you like Colombo. You have one more question. Else. Okay. On the, the, the 300,000 is the fact on the plus for the insurance. The property insurance did it come out to be that high? An additional three hundred thousand, so three point two million yeah, on, on, on the property insurance. Yeah. That's all part of this this part this here. You can you suggested that is that what it's going to be? Additional three hundred thousand on property insurance. Three point two total, additional three hundred on top of it. So three point two million it will be plugged in, correct? Right. All right. Mr. Lawrence brought up an interesting point. A few minutes ago, we don't need more points today. No. And, and that was how much does things, how much do things cost? In, in 2018, you you asked us how much does a museum actually really cost, and we we broke out in the accounting system, uh, the uh, the uh, elements of you know uh, repairs, maintenance, uh, electricity, and so forth. So what we found by the end of 2018 that. The Orr Museum didn't really t t cost $60,000. It actually cost $158,000. And the Seafood Museum didn't, didn't really cost $73,000. It really cost $152,000. And what we're in, the, and oh, by the way, the Mardi Gras Museum really did cost $48,000. What I'm, point I'm making is we are setting up in the accounting system the same kind of object codes uh, for the the uh, libraries, so that a year from now we'll be able to tell you how much a li we think a library costs the city. Right now we don't know because we don't track the elements of, of of thing. In some cases, it may be difficult if there's not multiple meters and so forth. But but we'll we'll do that over this next year. Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mister. Is there a motion by Mister. Motion by Mister. Guns. A second by Mister. Glavin. All in favor? Okay. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Thank you. I owe you one. <laughs>